Good afternoon. Welcome to the Museum of the Future, which is our stunning location for our guest and our special mm. event today. Today we have CFT that's hosting a Future Skills Initiative workshop session and roundtables. And what we've got is, as part of that initiative, we've taken the opportunity to get this beautiful location to interview a guest that's not a stranger, to the place and the space. So, Nader, mm. welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. Actually, Nader, can you tell us a little bit about, about the space we're in? Like, what is this building we're in? Mm. Uh, well, the first thing I can tell you is that the calligraphy on there yes. is extremely meaningful. Well, it is. a whole uh, panel on the ground floor where, yeah. which explains each one of these. But the yeah. first uh, quote is the one that's the, the eye capturing one. What is that? Uh, the future. Yes. Um, um, belongs to those that imagine it, design it, yeah. and execute it. It's a quote from the science check from the yeah. Yeah. Uh, And it's something that we live by on yeah. an ongoing basis. That's myself, by, I think it's, a, mm. it's something that we can all live by. It's, a, it's a, one of those things that keeps you thinking about the what next. Yeah. I think it's a brilliant yeah. statement. Imagine it, design it, and execute. Execute. Right. execute. It's about getting yeah. it done, not just yeah. thinking about the plan. Yeah, yeah, getting it done. Because most of the time, we often have this romantic idea that the idea is it, right? We think it's 80, 90% the idea, but it's 10% the idea or whatever. Right. And then the design is more, and then the execution is, I don't know, 70% or whatever. Or sometimes zero. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't want to talk about that too much, guys. We're here to be very, very positive because, in fact, Nader, what you do today is something that is very close to this facility in the vision His Highness had, along with the institution of the DIFC, right? Could you tell us more about who you are and what you do today? Of course, uh, how far back do you want me to go? Uh, yeah. Just for right now, and then we're going to peel back, far and Ronit is going to ask you You can go more. as far back as but you right, want yeah, to. But right now, just Whatever love feels to, natural to you. <laughs> <laughs> love to learn just about what you're doing so, right uh, now. So my current position is the uh, Managing Director of the Dubai Future District Fund. Uh, my uh, primary role is about looking at our portfolio of companies as a fund, uh, what we've uh, invested into and how do we support them on multiple uh, ways. So how do we help them on a strategic perspective, operational perspective, how do we help them with uh, uh, fundraising, how do we uh, help them business development wise with the other side of uh, like a key part of my mandate, the ecosystem. So how do we work with the ecosystem to understand their needs, their problem statements, and matchmaking. Uh, I love the word matchmaking because at the end of the day, we don't want to be perceived as another business development house mm. or that specific entity, but being done by design, by purpose, for the needs of the other side. Mm. So if I was to give an example, an RTA uh, is a massive conglomerate with multiple businesses, mm -hmm. multiple stakeholders. They all have different uh, problem statements, but understanding that those specific needs from specific businesses and connecting them to right portfolio, whether it's ours or the portfolio of the funds that we've also invested in. Mm. So the Dubai Future District Fund is not just a direct investment vehicle into tech, uh, but it's also a fund of funds uh, a platform as well. We've invested in incumbents, some emerging fund managers, amongst other um, uh, investments that we've done. Um, and uh, a lot of what, what I'm there to do is connect the two sides to one another. The wider Dubai ecosystem and beyond, uh, so soft planning uh, jurisdictions, etc., with the portfolio and helping them grow. Um, um, that's the sort of the 30,000 foot view of what I'm there to do. Uh, and uh, a big part of my journey to get to this point has sort of touched on different elements of what I am doing. Sorry, am I getting a bit more No, that's it? excellent. That's actually the next question I was going to ask is, is you know, exactly, Ronald was saying, go as far back as you can. So yeah. please do continue because We'd love to understand your experience building up to what you're doing today. So please do tell us more about your, your previous settings and your experiences, which mm -hmm. have brought you forward to be able to do what you're doing right now at DFDF. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you're touching on a passion part of mine. Uh, yeah. uh, so I started off with uh, uh, a corporate track, I like to call it, and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and a startup track. I've been involved as a co-founder, as an advisor, uh, as a sole founder a number of different entities, uh, whether in tech or not, uh, uh, from distribution to trade, to, to health tech, to travel, uh, travel tech. Um, 
And a lot of that is understanding the nuances of sort of um, grassroots problem statements, bottlenecks to development, uh, whether they be regulatory bottlenecks, uh, corporate engagement and tech adoption bottlenecks. Uh, so what is it that, that it would take to understand sort of the pulse on the ground that needs to be fixed or addressed sitting on the other side of the table as I'm at right now. You're talking about MVP and market product fit and you know minimum viable product. You're hearing, mm -hmm. yeah, these are problem statements for companies to join hands. Yeah, all the time. Exactly. Yeah. They have all our problems to solve, right? Uh, but at the same time, do they have the right appetite? Are their procurement teams given enough autonomy to decide that that's the best product for them? Or do they have to go with a blue chip just because their job's on the line? Have they picked something that's slightly off rather than 50% off, but it was a brand name that went wrong? Um, and which one would be more, uh, would put more pressure on them and their roles, right? And, right. And it's changing that mindset of being open to trying testing something that directly hits what your team is trying to address as opposed to, you know what, this is the market norm, this yeah. is what I have to tick a tick box uh, in sort of the series of questionnaires that I have as a procurement sort of uh, manager at the big mm. for example. You know, it's, it's super interesting that you touch upon that because one of the things we talk about a lot is when we look at technology and Ronit and I do some investing is this, 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 this thing my father said, unfortunately, because he's always right and I have a problem with him being right all the time is, yeah, it is. Know, it's, it's, it's very frustrating. Um, it's technology. Like the older brother is always right. I'm the older brother, so it's okay. <laughs> oh no, I'm the youngest. I'm always right, so it's okay. Your father's right. Your brother's right. No, no, mine. My, my, my brother. I love him. He's and, listening and, to this and the podcast. The wife is always right. right. The, the, no, I yes, that. That, yes. That, that. Pandora's box, gentlemen. Pandora's box. Let's keep the lid closed. Let's close keep the lid. <laughs> but what he said was, he said, technology for the sake of technology mm. does nothing for nobody. Yeah. And that is yeah. exactly what you're talking about because. You know, we come up with these ideas which we think are great mm. and we get stubborn almost like by default. Mm. We, we're also unaware yeah. because you're so stubborn to prove that you were right or that something can work. You're not open to actually perhaps understanding what needs to be required on the ground for mm. someone to pay for it yeah. or to change their mindset to adopt it. So even my team, when I talk to them, right? Oh, we've built an amazing product. We've built an amazing service. I'm like, okay, mm. go and sell it in the market. And get when you come back, for it. get someone to pay for it, yeah. right? And they come back to the market and they go, that's wonderful. What we think you have built mm. is fantastic. Great, buy it. And then they sit there and go, it's not in our roadmap. And you're like, oh, I forgot to ask my customers. <laughs> what do they actually want, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So you think what's great. So this is, a, this is a hugely important piece because if you expand on this more mm. from a government perspective, I know you said 30,000, but even if you go to 50,000, Dubai does so much from an infrastructure mm -hmm. perspective. RTA, transportation, DIWA, energy. These are massive, massive infrastructures. Builders and they will come. Right. Yeah. But none of them, uh, as much as they are, yeah. excellent organizations, startup nurturers of startups, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They do everything on a hundred million, a two hundred million, a half a billion yeah. scale, two-year time frame mm -hmm. projects. They're not looking at the startup that's looking at doing in. Uh, Mm. A minimum viable product or, uh, or, or changing mm. something in three months, six months, two months. These mm. very fast, nimble things. So what you're doing there, yeah. I think would be super interesting is if you could tell us some use cases or some things which have you've managed to translate from either your personal direct investments at DFDF or from the funds that you've invested in. Yeah. And maybe if I take a step back and I'll Please. give you some examples. Um, uh, you mentioned tech for the sake of tech. Oh. Uh, and... Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a great concept because one side of it is the startup lens, right? So mm. the startup lens is, I've, I've built this solution, this solution is the solution for the world. I, I know it, I have this gut feeling, I have this problem, therefore others will have it too. And you go on this journey of building it to the point where you're like, it's perfect for me. Um, but what I want to also bring into the picture is, and you mentioned it, is what you're doing here with Kumo, what, you're, what we're doing in terms of engagement with the government, is constantly putting out there what's available. Uh, because on the other side of the table, they might think of, this is the best solution I can, I can find for what my problem is. Mm. But they're not seeing everything because everything is constantly changing, evolving. There's new under the rock, under the table, yes. someone that's doing yeah. something in stealth mode. There's so much going out there. And what you see, what I see, what Ronit sees, mm. what, what everyone in the audience is seeing. Yeah. I mean, mm. 
honestly, we're, we're seeing so much, and it's it's our duty to engage with as many people as possible, discuss about all the possibilities of solutions. Mm -hmm. Because on one side, that might trigger a, an aha moment from the lens of the potential buyer, the potential incorporator on mm -hmm. the corporate side, uh, that would potentially, maybe that tech for the sake of tech, might be the perfect solution, but, but they're so ahead of their time that they built something that they weren't aware was even possible. Yeah. So when you bring the two together, they're just speaking different languages. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing I wanted to put out there is, this constant engagement needs to happen on both sides. Mm -hmm. A cost check on the tech for tech and making sure it's not just tech for tech. Right. But then on the other side, that they're aware of the possibilities of the what ifs. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but then more specifically, I think uh, we've, we've seen a lot of success stories. We've had a number of uh, portfolio companies that have broken the that barrier of corporate, the barriers mm -hmm. of international. Yeah. I mean, uh, we have uh, portfolio companies that are working with the major leagues in the U.S., for example. Oh, wow. On, on a translation perspective, on a dubbing perspective, Canada AI is doing some great work. On the other end of the world, uh, we have uh, La Liga working with Views, for example, another portfolio company of ours. Views has done very well. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you've seen their iconic uh, mm -hmm. uh, logo on, uh, in Media City, for example, but they're doing wonders, they're crossing borders. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I guess I wanted to touch on is the so what is the TAM? What is the, the, the SAM of people that are floating out of this region? And the TAM has always been, I'm tackling a regional problem and this is the size of my market. Right. GCC or MENA. And, right. And what we're seeing is for the first time for uh, in the last 10 years, there are people that are going out there, but we're not talking enough about the mm. successes of what they're doing yeah. outside of the borders of our periphery. Yeah. Um, and that's exciting. And I think sharing a lot of these stories, yeah. I know you, you've seen a lot of them. Uh, I'm just talking about a couple from our portfolio. Sure, sure. But there's so many uh, success stories yeah. out there that come from beyond the yeah. remits of this region and are solving for problems yeah. that are global in nature. And just to clarify for the audience, you're building, or you sorry, you're investing in companies building anywhere or they have to be building in Dubai or the UAE or the GCC or just tell us a bit more about the mandate. Mm. So at a, at a very high level, um, yeah. we were created uh, by two anchor investors, uh, mm -hmm. they're both government entities, the yeah. Future Foundation and the DIFC, yeah. the Dubai International Financial Center. And um, the idea there was uh, to set up a fund that has access to the, the best partners, the yeah. best networks as government that yeah. they have and corporates that they have. They've been engaging with corporates and government yeah. for uh, for a very long time. And by having them as anchor uh, uh, partners and investors in, in this whole story, we for the first time are able to pass that on to the two strategies that we have as a deployment uh, mm. uh, 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 strategies. Uh, the direct vehicle is an early stage to early growth vehicle. So we invest in from pre-seed up to Series B and first checks, and we do follow on investments up to Series C. Mm -hmm. um, and on, on the fund on fund side, uh, we, we do um, early stage investors as well as uh, investors that mm. uh, uh, dabble in and around the growth stage. On the fund side, it's only natural that funds in this region have a regional remit. Mm. So uh, on that front, we look at things on a local MENA and the MIASA perspective. So how are we? Uh, covering this wider mm. region through our funds to give, give them a platform and a further effect on let's find them a way to Dubai and setting up in Dubai yeah. and finding uh, portfolios from here, ways of expanding yeah. via their networks to the wider region. Yeah. On the direct portfolio, we're a little bit more focused on purely the Dubai uh, ecosystem through a couple of lessons. Uh, one is they're established here and they're solving for a market need specifically mm. here. Second lens is they're established here. They're solving for global needs. Yeah. And the third lens is, is there a regional entity, mm. whether it's a portfolio company of our portfolio funds mm. or regional entity that sees a lot of strategic reasons to be here, mm. whether it's on a business development perspective, sure. on an operational perspective, de-risking perspective to be based out of Dubai, yeah. preserving the wider region. Totally. So there is a strategic reason why they move yeah. in, but aren't. Uh, they're not, they're not suitcase here. tourist. Not a suitcase yeah, tourist. They just they want to come and build. Yeah. To a dollar, yeah, 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 yeah. Here because, because they have a dream, a there's a vision. Yeah. Here, and we're making it easier for them yeah, to make that decision. Absolutely. And that's a really important point, right? Because oftentimes, sadly, um, 
And we're seeing this again in this last cycle, given the lack of funding elsewhere in the world. A lot of our friends in all parts of the world seem to come here thinking, some, it's just, automatic. Let's, just, let's just hoover up some LP checks and then disappear. Mm. In banking, we call them suitcase bankers. Mm. Right? Um, and some of you know, we both obviously live here and you've, well, you're born and brought up here. So that's something we find very annoying. People <laughs> think they're just going to come and like, yes. boom, oh, do it. I just see that narrative yeah. is starting to shift. It has, yeah. Oh, yeah. it has, finally. No, we're Last having a lot of people. A no, totally. People international names. Right. I mean, the person that you're they're going to be yeah. interviewing right after us. I yeah, mean, yeah. It's a great example. Yeah, yeah. Of, uh, the, the caliber of No, no, I can't remember. And staying, yeah, staying here. Yeah, staying here. when Garo first met me when I moved here, so many of my friends back in the UK were like, are you retiring? Why are you moving to? And now they keep asking me, "How do I? How do I move to <laughs> Dubai or Abu Dhabi? Where, Not why, how?" Events, yeah, uh, a week and a half ago yeah. before uh, 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 yeah. one of the events by one of our portfolio sure. funds, and they've done some research with Google yeah. on, on a search perspective. Yeah, and what they were uh, focused on is on an intent perspective. Yeah, where do you intend to move? Okay, and this is the entire world. And who, who did this study? Uh, uh, Google. Google. So Google Analytics. Uh, this is Google Search Analytics yeah. alongside uh, one of our portfolio funds. They right. worked on a project together to capture this awesome oh, wow. intent. Uh, yeah. Did they, did they publish they this? Or? I'm not sure if they published oh, okay. it, okay. I'm ah. not sharing the names. Uh, <laughs> ah, ah. But, but there we go. what was yeah. interesting about it is they who came Who came top? The color coding yeah, yeah. was green is Dubai. And something like two who else, of, who else was in the green category? So the green was the color coding for Dubai, and okay. then there were other co uh, colors. Okay. Oh wow! So and we were there, were, green. there was a long tail of yeah. other colors. Yeah, yeah. And then you had green, and two thirds of the world was green. Even Greenland oh. was green. <laughs> I'm like, what oh, is the this is green. To... Like where? For, where from the world so people where, wanted, to wanted to come to Dubai? Move anywhere. Yeah. Where would you go? Where would you go? Oh, so one part of it was yeah. um, the question of the direct yeah, yeah. question. Yeah. The other one was the intentionality. Yeah. So they wow. pick up intentionality by looking for schools for kids. Yeah, yeah. Work. Yeah. Other income. Like, income. Uh, yeah. Sure, average income. Sure, sure. Other sure. indications of intent, and it was yeah. beautiful to see to, yeah. to the point that you're just raising there. Yeah. About how much momentum of that narrative yeah, has shifted yeah, to. Yeah. Do I just want to do business there and out? Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. Want to move there yeah, yeah. Intentionality includes family. Yeah, includes family. Uh, That's the key one is of the family, right? right? Because right. in time. the old days, what they would come is that the men or sometimes the women would come and just work, and their families yes. would not be yes, here. Yes, yes, yes. Their wives yeah. or their husbands. Correct. Their Absolutely kids, correct. And, and that has changed. And, and you in know, the it's, last it's two things. Cycle. Two things that have happened yeah. in parallel. Yeah where if you, you can draw a point from today, this conversation we're yeah. having right now about yeah. what's happening about building global businesses yeah. from here and people who are globally looking to yeah. relocate here yeah. from a lifestyle, but yeah, yeah. work because you can do opportunity. that. Opportunity. No, yes. Opportunity. But if you draw it back yeah. to a point, there's actually a, mm. one point you can draw it back to and that's the launch of DFA. The launch okay. of the Dubai Futures Accelerator okay. is actually the starting point of a formal recognition by a government entity right. in the region. Yeah. Not even just the UAE, in was the that? region. Eight years ago, seven, eight years ago. Okay, about the time I came. Right. Yeah. And if I can also just add one yeah. point to that. Yeah. And yeah. what's beautiful about the story you're saying and other yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. is that it wasn't just a... Usually when you have an acceleration program, yeah. it's a D2B yes. uh, a sort of solution yeah. to find the right solutions for you. But this, for the first time, engaged government. Yes. And yeah. that's how forward thinking yes. government is here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was in the ballroom of Emirates Towers and they said we're converting mm. all this retail space of these amazing restaurants, Scarlet's, Ivy, all of it. Oh. This, we're going to convert all of this, yeah, Hakkasan. Yeah, yeah into Hakkasan. I see every, Hakkasan. Right. They're going to convert I all of this I prefer when Hakkasan was in the city center. <laughs> we'll scrub that. is too far away. Yeah, delete this. They convert <laughs> that, converted yeah. that into yeah. Dubai Futures Accelerator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they moved it one floor up, mm. one floor down. Mm. Then it became three floors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it became a program where they did seven pillars. Mm. And suddenly... It's a little bit like going to... Sorry to interrupt. No, no. But uh, it's a little bit like going to... When I, when I visited it, what's that, you know... Silicon Valley? No, Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not Iron Man. Yes, Iron Man. Okay. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. You know, because... The race, you mean? No, 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 not the race. Um, 
the, the movie. The movie, right. The movie. Oh, you're talking about from a futuristic technology Yeah, yeah, because, you know, he's got his, like, whole area where yes, he's got yes. all his suits and, and all his the tech toys. and everything, right. Am I thinking of the right person? Maybe. Yeah, and he's got that robot that walks around. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's very Iron futuristic. Man, right? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Iron Man. You got and it, you got so it. So when, um, Robert know, maybe, Downey, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. And so when the minister was showing us around, I can't remember his exact title now, but Minister of AI and Golden Beast or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it work. Uh, and it keeps getting out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it felt like I told. I actually told him. I said, "This feels like you know, he doesn't look like Robert Downey." But it felt like it was like a right. It was like an Iron and Man that's thing. The point. And, yeah, yeah. And that's the point yeah, because yeah. what they did was they formalized yeah. the language yeah. for people to recognize that there was yeah. another category of something completely new. Yeah. Because up until then, everything mm. that every family office was doing here yeah. that wasn't seasoned, but it was doing businesses. Yeah was buying real estate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They were just buying real estate or... Dubai was just about tourism and real estate. And very yeah. few families that were ex very yeah. well seasoned yeah. were investing in funds globally. But nothing was happening here. Yeah. So this was the first spark mm. of this crescendo which we're experiencing now, where then yeah. it wasn't even four or five years later that Saudi Arabia said we could do this. And it wasn't after yeah. that that Qatar said we could do this. It's not after that that, yeah. you know, the DIFC coupled with this then said, oh, Bahrain said we have to do this from a regulatory perspective. Yeah. You can actually plot this on a course that Dubai mm. lit the fire on this yeah. so strongly. Yeah. But in parallel, yeah. Yeah, go on. parallel, what they did, which was super significant, yeah. was the golden visa program. Yeah. And the golden visa program, not many people know this. I guess that's why he has both this. job titles. Yeah, yeah well, maybe. They, they actually had yeah. this, what was it? It was actually started from a prime minister's project, PMO's office, prime minister's office, yeah. in tandem with DFA. Mm. Because they said, if we want to retain talent, we want to grow everything. Yeah, you, have, you need security of tenure. Right, you need you security of tenure. You can't come for two years. Right, right. Otherwise, you treat it like... Right. Maybe not a suitcase visit, but a short term and visit. And who was yeah. part of the first accelerators of DFA? You had Uber, you had everyone else, you had some of the biggest mm. names in the world. You had uh, mm. the guys from Waze. Can we, can we, sorry, can we double click on this transition from the Dubai you knew when you were a child oh growing up? Oh my God. Real estate. We grew up. I mean, yeah, I mean. You know, a real estate play or a tourism play. Oh to Eight years ago or 10 years ago, if it said Dubai or Abu Dhabi or the UAE, it was going to become a technology play. No chance. They would have laughed. They, oh you know, my God, no chance. People would have said, this is just vaporware, it's just marketing, oh, this right? This is just... Uh, Talk about how this happened. How did this process happen? If I can also touch yeah. on this, because yeah. you mentioned it, um, you, you used a specific word to use, yeah. buildit.com. Yeah. The definition of buildit.com is has changed and evolved over okay. time. In the past, it was bricks and mortar. Yeah. Right? Build a, the, yeah. the massive ports. Yeah, yeah. And now you have one of yeah. the, the largest port operators in the world. Yeah. You build an airport. Yeah. Emirates. An airline, wow. And it will yeah. enable. Well, we've got another commerce, one coming soon. <laughs> trade, trade finance, yeah. the financial yeah, yeah. hub. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, DFC, yeah. Everything. Dafsa, yeah. Jafsa. Yeah. Oh my God. What, the, what, what, what comes next, right? Yeah. And I think TCOM, Media City, yeah. Internet City. And who led that? Things. Gargawi. Exactly. His Excellency, yeah. Mr. Gargawi. Gar 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 is to your yeah. point, is it's not just build it. That was, that was enablement. Yeah. So I, I think of it more as enablement as yeah. opposed to build it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before we needed infrastructure. Yeah. Then we needed full business ownership. Mm -hmm. Then we needed uh, tenure. Regulation. Rules and laws yes, and, regulation. Yeah, awareness yeah. building. So the yeah. World Government Summit, uh, future accelerators, these yeah. are all the examples of platforms of enablement, whether yeah. it's awareness building, engagement, yeah. cross-pollination of people right, yeah. and, and ideas. Uh, and all of this sort of builds to where we are today. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's all of this. I mean, if you yeah. look at a lot of the tourism numbers, a lot of this business tourism, right. it's a lot, a lot of this. Right. Yeah. And what does that enable? Dubai enables commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, it has the ports, it has the airports, it yeah. has the connectivity, it has the, yeah. the events, the conferences, yeah. and all of that coming together into yeah. an amazing place. I mean, you don't even need yeah. to leave. Unbelievable. But, but talk there... about that transition, sorry. sorry. No, no, talk go, go, about go, the transition from enabling, you know, physical commerce to digital and technology. Because it's a, it's the same spectrum, but it's a different type of thing, right? Because the entrepreneur is building in software or in technology, all the talented entry-level engineer 10 years ago, we, this place was not on the map, let's be, you know. If you're in old economy, absolutely. If you're in banking, like I have been for most of my life, absolutely. But if you were in tech or in 
blockchain or AI. You wouldn't set up. It yeah. wouldn't have been. You'd be in India. Or you'd be, going, you'd be hoping to go from India to the valley, right? Yes. So how do we get to the stage where now, whether it's Western media or observers are saying, this is this place, and I mean the whole of the UAE is it. credible in AI and blockchain and tokenization. How, just talk us through that with your, you know, with your sort of knowledge of what's happening behind the scenes. How, how do we get here? I think a lot of it has to do with all these foundational elements. And yeah. I think it's, it's very hard to pinpoint sure. one thing because it's not one thing. Mm. It's all of this yeah. that's been curated and mm. un unveiled at the mm. right time. It doesn't make sense to unveil a golden visa yeah. when you're, 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 you have too much coming in and you have yeah. to control it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't make sense to unveil uh, freehold ownership mm -hmm. when you have inflationary pressures. Mm -hmm. But every single thing comes at the right time. And, and that's what's made it very beautiful over here. Mm -hmm. you, you go through these cycles of um, aggressive expansion, let it settle in. Aggressive expansion, let it settle mm -hmm. in. And it's cyclical, and we've seen it for, for decades. We've seen it uh, on a generational perspective. Um, and and mm -hmm. uh, maybe to address your point more specifically, mm -hmm. um, um, around talent, because that's sort of an underlying thing that I was mm. kind of gathering from that is uh, where we were in the 80s, 90s, mm. early 2000s versus where we are in the 2010s yeah. and where we are in the 2020s. Um, and a lot of it was, it had to be a little bit of a premium to, to attract someone to come here. I mean, mm. I mean, you were literally coming to a tiny little town in yeah. the middle of nowhere and you're yeah, relocating yeah. from somewhere in the world because yeah, yeah. we're growing at an exponential rate but mm. we didn't have all the all the resources we needed in the country, yeah. so we had to attract that. That came at the premium, but that yeah. started to shift. Um, you saw that in the 2010s, where people were willing to come. First, it started more regionally. Yeah. You saw it from South Asia, from the Middle East. People were willing, willingly coming here and saying, I'd rather come here um, at par with what I could get elsewhere, because mm -hmm. A, proximity, safety, geopolitical stability, mm -hmm. all of the things, macro stability, economic stability. Mm -hmm. You don't need that much of a vision or a hope or feel like it's a risk. It's all those are mitigated. And they're all coming here, but mm. I mean, who's attracted first? You're, you're bringing a lot of bankers, you're bringing uh, people to establish the, the yeah. industries that are saying, I want to call this home. Yeah, yeah. And now once you've had people that have established that this place is home, yeah. they're, they're, their expertise that wants to stay here. Mm -hmm. They're the rounds that have been building the beautiful first layer of unicorns that we have coming into the region. Yeah, yeah. And it's that expertise that then turns even more yeah. unicorn founders, more expertise. Um, but then you get to layer two, um, and mm. how do you attract the engineering talent? How do you attract yeah. some of the other ones? And to your point, I think yeah. more of you mentioned it is, they want to look at the US. Why would yeah. they look here? Oh, well, they used to. <laughs> so, well, they used to, and that's exactly that's the changing point. now. That's the right. in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Is, uh, some of the discussions we've been having yeah, yeah. is, I, I can't name the entity. Sure, sure, so, sure. Uh, one example of a type of entity, yeah. they're a massive gaming entity based out of the States. They yeah. said, look, I have to pay a, a massive premium to bring them to the States. Yeah. Uh, they're far from home. And the pipeline yeah. of talent, a lot of it's coming from this, this yeah, wider yeah. region, right? Yeah. Uh, and and then, if I come here, yeah. they don't want to pay that premium. They're closer to home, they're happier. Mm. But then more importantly, there's the golden visa, yeah. uh, uh, the regime that's coming to place. Mm. In the US, uh, for example, they don't have a guaranteed no, person. No. They have to sponsor mm. a visa. No, no, yeah. And that could be turned down. Absolutely. Or it could be turned down two and years it's getting harder now. and harder to get those. Much harder. If you come harder. from countries Much that are harder. in this so region. If you're building an organization, yeah. if you're trying to bring in that talent, yeah, yeah. at least over here, you know, A, you're yeah. going to get that talent yeah. because you, you have a government that's willing to work with you to mm. attract that talent. And B, to create that continuity. These, these programs are 10 years long and who knows, they might even be more flexible in the future. But Fingers that, crossed. <laughs> hopefully, absolutely, hopefully. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But, but that 10 years is already yeah. no, so it's a huge. You, you know you're going no, to get No, the 10 years was, I think, a major, major step. Right, it, um, major step. But yeah. Like you said, it had to be unveiled at the right time. If you're time. on a two-year visa and the day mm. you lose your job, you have 30 days to leave, you're never going to call There's this no place. Continuity. Right. Yeah. And you're, you're like a, you're like a yeah, short-term tourist, a long-term tourist. But you know, yeah. looking at all of this that yeah. we've been talking about, the historical aspect, yeah. the current trends, the current upward mm. path, the, the focus, the spotlight, yeah. and a lot of people who have self-awareness and interest in this region, and yeah. especially in Dubai and what's happening here, 
I think we had a bit of a catalyst. We had two catalysts, okay. which I think have really compounded people's personal safety, also assurances about the government and mm. policy and infrastructure mm. to come here much faster than they would. I think it's accelerated by five or 10 years. And I think those two things are COVID. Mm -hmm. I think the way yeah. the UAE and Dubai reacted to COVID is the first time, right? Mm. As, as somebody who's been here all my life, you always have these radar points where I've been here for 42 years, my family's been here for 50 years. And then you see someone who's been here for five years, 10 years, mm. 20 years, two years. You get a sense check of what people see as value yeah. from here that brought them here to set up here. Mm. And so you're picking this radar from business perspective or job perspective, entrepreneur or employer or investor. And what you found was this universal piece of mm. people that came here, whether it was for one year, two years, or they've been here for 20 years, went, I'm moving my families here because the security here mm. is so fantastic. Mm -hmm. The services are so responsive. The, everything is so good from a lifestyle perspective for me and my family. I want to move them here. Mm. And then the second thing which happened very closely afterwards is the sort of cementing of Web3 being a space where you could build from anywhere, mm -hmm. yeah. create anywhere. And for the first time, the UAE, and I'm going to take a massive leap and say this, mm will be one of the primary exporters of Web3 technology companies in the next 10 years. So I think for the first time, when you look at the UAE or the region as importing, yeah. always importing services, yeah. we're importing talent, we're importing things. Now, with all of these bright yeah. building blocks in place, with this accelerated catalyst of COVID plus Web3 mm. and everything else, I think the next crescendo for the next 10 mm. years is the UAE can start exporting Exporting technology, which is limitless for resource, limitless for yeah. a number of things, yeah. good energy, nuclear, solar. Yeah. If I can just double wow. down on yeah. what you were just saying there, good. just to take the point home as well as yeah. um, there's always this narrative of the UAE is pro business, the UAE yeah. is pro safety, the yeah. UAE is pro health and consumer mm. protection. Mm. But it was tough a lot of the times because you didn't see it. Yeah. And COVID was the most visible mm, time where right. you could see the government yeah, yeah. working yeah. extremely hard yeah. to make sure that all three of those yeah. things are in check. Yeah. And this this was a message to the world that yeah. it wasn't talk, it wasn't just a few people yeah, getting, yeah, yeah. getting access to this. Yeah. It is for everyone. Um, yeah. Uh, no, COVID was like a. Everyone's changed their narrative I, of the place. Right? I think COVID is like almost like an X-ray machine. Yeah. yeah. So you could see inside. Right. And you could it brought to the surface like ways some countries reacted with, for want of a word, xenophobia and protectionism. Right. right. And you're they right. closed themselves. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And unless you're Sweden, right? Where they just didn't. Well, let's leave Sweden out of this. COVID doesn't even happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like an X. It was like an X-ray machine. Yeah. That's a very good point as well. Back yeah. to what Nadora was saying. Yeah. Is, now, why, why would someone that could be anywhere in the world, yeah. sitting on an island, uh, uh, they could reduce anywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, they're borderless in terms of what they're yeah, creating. Yeah. Right. Why are they choosing to be here? Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly that. It's they know their, their, their interests are going to yeah. be at least discussed. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, in, in, uh, there's the, the three halves of government constantly has to maneuver, right? There's yeah. Building consumer trust is paramount. You can't Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. Um, just, uh, just to be pro-business. Yeah. So consumers are in check. Business in check, safety is in check. Yeah. Right. All of this, because you want to keep the quality of life. Yeah. You want to make sure that people want to continue to live and make sure that the government is acting in their best interest. Yeah. Entities like ARA were created with this mindset, right? Yes. Yeah. It's not come in and I'm going to put barriers mm. to this. We want to talk and engage with everyone mm. around. Um, which is why the Web3 ecosystem has just constantly mm. popped. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're seeing them starting to huddle and stay yes, yes. Uh, because mm. they always had that sudden pressure of the, of the mm. government on so, such and such place decides to decide mm. this is the only priority I have overlooking the other two. Yeah, yeah. consistency. We've talked a lot yep. about the past. We've got to talk the about the present. We're going to talk about the future. future. Podcast in the future. So I guess Web3 is like a nice segue into the future. Yes, but as is. you wrap up this discussion, this podcast, and um, the, uh, the horizon the, seems oh my God, to be, the sun just, is it's like the sun through. is out. The, sun sun is, the artificial sun, sun has presented itself. The sun I don't is know. coming through the windows. Oh, wow, okay. Windows. I think they, they took notice um, of it, yeah. Wow. What, is the, um, what does the next 5, 10, 15 years look like for the UAE, for Dubai? What industries, 
the last 15 years, I first began to come to, first as a tourist from London, then I moved here probably about, no, more than 15 years ago, 2005, 2006, the, when they just, after they built the Madinat. <laughs> just, this is Ronit's ability to do timelines. When they built the Madinat. <laughs> you know, like when the Mall of the Emirates, it was, Mall of the Emirates was there. Yeah. The Madinat. So, early not, 2000s. Early 2000s. Early I was 2000s. maybe a couple of years after right. they opened it, because it was still not too expensive. It was still new, not expensive. Pre-2008, right? Oh, definitely pre-2008. There you go. So you're good. So, I've what? seen what the last 15 years has been, until maybe, say, COVID. COVID is like a series break. And it used to be, you know, we discussed real estate, ports, tourism, the airline, you know. Hospitality. Hospitality. And we talked about Web3. Obviously, there's huge efforts here and down the road in Abu Dhabi on AI. Oh. What are going to be the big two, three, four industries or sectors that, you know, in your fund, top of mind, either for Dubai or just in general, when you're thinking about investing, uh, if you have to like call out two, three, four sectors, what would they be? Well, maybe I'll break it down into two things. Number one is where do I see the momentum? Yeah. And where do I see sort of this high level movement? And then yeah. where uh, I personally am very bullish about. Um, yeah. The high, uh, high level momentum is uh, one thing that I, I like to use and I yeah. describe Japan as being that, I describe Korea as being that, yeah. and I describe us in the GCC and the UAE as being that. Right. We've modernized, but we haven't forgotten it. Um, okay. So, I mean, as you can see, yeah. uh, uh, we, we're, we're embracing change, but we're also not forgetting who we are and yeah. our roots. Beautiful. And, uh, and that goes into the business world as well, yeah. and how we're sort of engaging with the, the next series of growth. Yeah. The next steps and the what next. The yeah. Question mark around the what next is not forgetting the fundamentals of what makes us us. Yes. Safety, quality of yeah. life, consumer confidence yeah. is one layer. Yeah. The next layer is what are the core components of this? Of yeah. What that makes Dubai Dubai? Yeah. Is enablement of business and yeah. business activities. Yeah. So continue Agreed. to create those platforms for business and trade yeah. to happen with the world. So neutrality, yeah. confidence with. Uh, the entire world and making sure that that constantly is on, uh, on our agenda making sure that we're friends with as many people as possible, neutral as many people as mm. possible because our fundamental language is enablement and making sure that people are, are given the choice to make the decisions mm. right? as, as, as a sort of an infrastructure. Right? But what makes me super excited about the what next is what are we carving out in terms of opportunities? Uh, so there are um, um, a lot of time, uh, 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 moves that are happening in Saudi and Qatar and Abu Dhabi and Dubai, and it's great, great, creating this opportunity around genomics, uh, DNA testing, and creating um, a lot of uh, life sciences opportunities, health tech opportunities that weren't present in the past. Yeah. Having this layer that the government's now willing to open up and, and allow for very curated, cautious research to take mm. place. Oh, I, wow. I, I call it cautious. Uh, cautious, or cautious. Uh, yeah. uh, because at the end of the day, this people's data, this people's um, yeah. information that's there. Yeah. So not at the cost of people's information, but by creating opportunities mm. where they didn't exist before. Yeah. The other ones around IP, around construction of property, I think that's another yeah. uh, exciting place for us because we're yeah. up for it. We're, we've been growing, we've been creating, not just in this region, we've been building all mm. over the world. Yeah. Why aren't we exporting that IP? Um, and, and, and I feel that that's another movement, mm. I think, in terms of where we're heading. The other two, I mean, you've seen the news. You, you touched on what we, and we're very excited that this is becoming a global hub, yeah. if it's not already a Yeah, and it's hub. definitely it one of the, and because Web3 will be decentralized, but it'll be one of the right. half a dozen AI. hubs. Uh, yep. I mean, you've seen the, the massive investments that yeah, yeah. place over here. Huge, huge. Really yeah, yeah. Huge. How many so, countries have a minister for AI? I don't know. No, I don't none. Number, but we were definitely the you were the first. Yeah. I mean, World, <laughs> World Government first. Summit is yeah. really a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a UAE thing, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A minister yeah. of happiness, a minister of... They, they really want to try and yeah. touch yeah, on things which people do. Those bridges aren't just physical bridges. They're negotiating bridges. Our Ministry of Foreign Affairs yeah. bridge, has a tech uh, uh, um, 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 vertical. Tech vertical right. for um, uh, for diplomacy. Okay. So tech diplomacy for the first time is happening out of this part of the world. Mm. So imagine you're building tech and you know that the government's 
there to make sure that your tech is protected mm. wherever you're looking to export it as well. Something that I was talking to quite a few diplomatic officers about five years ago. Mm. And they implemented it as an, as an idea because the concept of soft power didn't actually come up till again 10 years ago. Mm. No one really discussed it or, or labeled it or categorized mm. it or looked to to carry it through. Mm. So it's... And it goes wow. back to what you were saying, Ronan, because mm. sectors is one thing, but yeah. how do you make sure that it's, it's viable and why are they here? Mm. And all of these rails are getting created. Yeah, and yeah. That's really the role of the government and the yeah. ecosystem is to provide those rails for this innovation. Yeah. Get into the why. Yeah. You know, it's, it's amazing yeah. when COVID happened, yeah. one of the top economies in the world, I, I won't say who, yeah. but again, close to that diplomatic office because of UAE technology and all this stuff I do in investing. Mm -hmm. The official guidelines from that mm -hmm. economy and their diplomatic office there to all their officers here was stay in Dubai, you're better off. Okay. Don't come back home. Right. It's not good for you here. Uh, and they actually left yeah. all of them back here and they were actually wow. happier for it. And some people tried to leave from that diplomatic office in so that part of the world. Yeah. It's another, if, if people listening to this podcast want to learn more about your organization, the work Dubai and the UAE are doing about the future, what are the best sources they should consult? What are the things they should look at? Is it your website? Are there other documents you should re refer them to for, if I don't know, some particularly earnest listeners want to do some extra reading? Well, the first extra thing I will say is yeah. definitely reach out to either myself or the team. We're all accessible. Um, our website has um, a constant blog that um, showcases yeah. some, of the, some of the thought leadership pieces that we're putting together mm -hmm. uh, about the ecosystem. And, uh, uh, and yeah. obviously, um, with, with people uh, uh, that we're engaging with, to, to constantly uh, raise mm. awareness about what's going on in the ecosystem. Yeah. So other meetups and events, we try to be at as many as possible. Yeah. Uh, but um, we're also very reachable. I mean, we try to uh, speak to as many people as possible mm -hmm. because our, our role here is not just to deploy capital. It's also to listen, hear, take that feedback mm. and, and serve it uh, to, the, to the right mm. decision makers. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank for you so much. Us. Yeah, Thank you so much for joining Fantastic. us. Wonderful building. Yeah. Thank you. All the best. Yeah.